So one concept we deal with a lot in Schillinger's system, and I find people who aren't familiar with his system don't have much uh, pre-existing knowledge of this concept, is circular permutations, specifically clockwise and counterclockwise circular permutations. And you can do permutations of any parameter, whether it be note order or rhythmic values or rest patterns or root cycle movement, um, you know, chord changes, chord structure changes, uh, larger structural things like song sections. Um, uh, so I won't get into too much of that, but just in general, uh, you know, if you take, let's just take four elements, um, a set like A, B, C, D. Uh, so let's say these represent notes or, or something. So um, note A, B, C, D. Uh, if we imagine those positioned around a circle, so A being at 12 o'clock, B being at 3 o'clock, C being at 6 o'clock, and D being at 9 o'clock, we imagine rotating those values around the circle by one position. So in other words, A moving to from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, B moving from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock, and so forth. And we describe their new position. Um, we would have D coming back from up from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock. So D would actually be first now, and then A, B, C. Uh, and then we move them one more uh, position. We'd have uh, C, D, A, B, and then one more position. We have B, C, D, A. And then if we move them again, they'd be back in their really original position. Um, so, you know, for any um, set of elements, you have the number of permutations that equal that number. So if you have four elements, you've got four potential circular permutations. Now that's clockwise. Um, you can think of it as being slots, like if you've got four slots, you're bumping them all one to the right. So this, this last one ends up falling out and popping back, and you have to put it in the previous slot. Um, if you're going counterclockwise, it's the exact same thing. It's just the other direction. So the first per so counterclockwise permutation would be B, C, D, A. The next one would be C, D, A, B. And the last one would be D, A, B, C, D. Um, and then again, if you did one more, you'd come back to the original one. So those are permutations in a nutshell. Um, not super complex, but once you understand, uh, you know, how they can influence the amount of variety you can get out of a single piece of material, um, they're pretty powerful. Uh, so how these work, basically, um, in my program, you have the ability to permute four different parameters. Uh, again, in Schillinger, in a larger system, you can permute anything. But just in the scope of this program, I found it was useful to have access to four. Um, the first two are almost a little bit redundant. This first one permutes uh, just the notes. So whatever's in notes. Um, so here we've got the same five values. Um, we'll just call them 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, even though it's really 62, 60, 60 62, 63, and so forth. Um, back down to here. Uh, so now if, if this direction for each respectively, so the, each of these are the parameter that you can change. So this is permutation of the notes themselves. Um, whatever's in here, oops whatever's in here is the direction that it's going. So if you set them to zero, they're not really doing anything. It doesn't matter what's in here. So this is the rhythm at which you're moving the permutation. Um, and just as a reminder, you don't ever want to have just a zero in any of these, anything, any rhythmic list in this program. You don't want to just a zero because it will it's basically saying wait zero and then do it again and wait zero and do it again. So you, you kind of end up in this skipping loop. Um, you could have a zero as part of a list because it'll do five beats and then skip and then go back to five, which would be pointless, but it, w it wouldn't cause a problem in there. Uh, but if you just had a zero. Um, so if you don't want it to do anything, just set the actual directions to zero. Now, if you set it to one, 
it's going to initialize by doing a counter. Uh, it's going to do initialize by doing a clockwise permutation, um, and it's going to remain that way for, in this case, five beats. So in our original um, thing, it's it would now be instead of being zero two three five seven notes is now seven zero two three five. Right, and it would be in that, um, you know, it would actually look like seven, two, three, five, seven, zero. Um, oh, sorry. What's wrong with me here? So it looked like that in its first clockwise permutation. Down here. Okay. Um, and it would keep doing that. So uh, it would it would initialize at f at one circular clockwise permutation, and then five beats later it would do it again. Um, now, if you wanted it to go back to its original um, position, you could do one zero one. So zero one is counterclockwise. So it's going to move clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. So it's going to be kind of like turning back and forth. Um, in this position. But let's just hear what uh, this sounds like. So we had, if we had it as zero, it's just playing our same five notes over and over again. Um, we change this to one. So as I said, it's starting with 67 now. And it starts at 65. So as you can see, the pattern is the, the notes are now kind of, it starts at a, uh, a note back in the pattern from wherever it, it was last. Um, now again, let's say we wanted it to, um, do this. So it's going to do clockwise, clockwise, and then we'll back one. So so now it's just changing the notes independent of the rhythm. The rhythm itself isn't changing. Uh, it's just the notes. Uh, now this same, this one here does the same thing with the ARP order. Now, in, in a certain, if you have the, if you have auto generate ARP order on, in other words, the ARP, this ARP order is being disregarded. The ARP order is the note order, right? So, if you have auto generate ARP order on, the second uh, permutation function is not really doing anything new. You might as well use this. They, they, they aren't doing anything different um, because the ARP order is is the note order. Now if you had ARP order, uh, auto-generate ARP order turned off, then this would be uh, useful because you could keep the notes the same, um, but permute this list here. Right. So let's turn auto generate ARP order. Uh, so let's hear um, let's eliminate these two because I don't want it to wrap. I just kind of want it to be clear because we've got five elements. So I eliminated anything over four because four is really the fifth element. Um, so without doing any permutation introduce some permutation. And change things. Uh, here we can do the same thing with the actual rhythm. So this is uh, doing the same thing to the same basic process, but it's permuting the ARP rhythm. Um, I'm going to remove this divisor here, so it's still back to a whole note, half, half, quarter, quarter. 
Um, so let's say, let's change this every 10. Um, As you can see, we started out without any change, and then after 10 beats, it permuted that. So it started out as being whole half half quarter quarter, and then it after 10 beats, which is the whole figure here, um, it went to two two one one four, and you know if it had done another one, it would have been two one one four two, and so forth, um, keeping the order of the notes the same. So the order it was completely independent of the order of the notes. Um, so the spectrum, and you can do the same thing with the rest rhythm. I'm not going to show that to you just because I want to. I don't want to spend too much time here, um, but that would do the same thing with this rest pattern right here. It wouldn't do anything because the rest pattern is zero. But if we were using one, another rest pattern, the pattern of the rest would undergo permutation.